r slash ask reddit what are your best examples of people cheating the system i'll start so i work in the luggage claim department for a major airline all day i get to hear customers yelling and complaining what i did is borrow one of the wheelchairs from the airport and sit behind my desk all day long customers come in all angry see me in the wheelchair realize they are about to yell at a guy who is possibly crippled and all of a sudden they turn into the nicest people physically my blood pressure has dropped and in general i'm in a pretty good mood most of the time edit so you are the wind beneath my wings i hope this goes right to the top getting things done but using psychology to make it pleasant my boss will often check the date modified on certain files on our server to see if I have updated or even opened a certain file recently. So, I have installed a change of utility that allows me to modify the date modified on any file. This comes in most handy when my boss wants to give me weekend assignments. I just come in on Monday morning and change the date modified to Saturday night and he thinks I was actually doing something for work on Saturday night. I've actually received a lot of kudos for this. I don't feel bad though, because my boss is a huge donghead. My wife and I were at a super fancy restaurant in NYC. Reservations not allowed. Expect to wait. We get there and are told we will be waiting about 2 hours. No problem we planned on this. Some guy right after us shook the reservation guy's hand handing him $200. Next thing I know I hear table for 2 for Thomas. Thomas being my name and I asked for a table of 2 I say that is me. They sit us and we order drinks and apps. 5 minutes later they say we are the wrong Thomas but we could stay since we had already ordered. Guess who was the right Thomas? The guy who paid $200 to skip the line. This is gold because you cheated somebody who was trying to cheat. You ought to be higher up in the comment ranks. I was flying last month, and the plane I was on had Wi-Fi. There was a free 15 minute trial, and then you could purchase a chunk of time. I just kept deleting the cookies on my phone, refreshing, and logging back in. I stayed online for over an hour for free. You're a menace to society. Think of all the worn out internet tubes because of him. Monstrous. This reminds me of when I was on a late night train which had free TV for 5 minutes on back of seat screens. So I just kept moving seats for an 1h30 train journey. That's a lot of seats you warmed. Watching TV. While staying in shape. Nice. I use Lemuire to download Lemuire Pro. I knew someone who would hold one religious ceremony in his house every year so that it could be considered a place of worship and he didn't have to pay taxes. Tax fraud sounds like a good idea until you get caught. When I was in college, I had this meal plan where the school essentially took my actual money and turned it into campus dollars that could only be spent at school dining halls and cafes. I didn't mind so much until the end of the semester, when I was informed that any unspent campus dollars would go away. I had more than a hundred bucks left, and only a day to spend them. Here's what I did. I went to the nicest campus restaurant the one where you're supposed to take your parents when they come to visit. Basically, a real restaurant with wait staff. That also happened to take campus dollars. I got the most expensive thing on the menu, and then called the waiter over. I asked him if I could tip him in campus dollars, and he said yes. I asked him if he would have immediate access to those campus dollars, in the form of actual money, and he said yes. So I made him a deal. I gave him a monster tip, and he gave me half of it back in actual money. Many years later, I am still proud of this. I made a server's day, screwed the man, and got my money back. Torrenting college textbooks. I love the internet. I once torrented textbook for a computer ethics class. The irony of this statement is so delicious I could sell it for $30 a plate. Whenever people come to the pool where I lifeguard and have guests with them, I always ask them if they live more than 50 miles away. Our policy is guests from more than 50 miles away don't pay guest fees. If they say no I give them the look and ask them again. They usually say yes after that. Saving customers $2 like a boss. There is nothing better than employees who try to save customers money. Having worked in customer service, I have no idea what in the hell compels you to do it. But I thank and commend you. You are a fine human being. Check out guy at a nearby grocery store did this for us. Do you have any coupons? No. Wrong answer. Do you have any coupons? Of course. D. 
I get paid by my work even though I am on reddit for 5-6 hours per day. I need to see all of you in my office immediately. Same here, except, I work in internet marketing and SEO. So if anyone sees me on here I tell them I'm researching link building tactics. I bring all my rechargeable items, shaver, cell phone, laptop, etc. to work and plug them in there. I figure I must have saved at least $1 to $2 last year in electricity. The college I commuted to didn't have enough parking for the commuters but roughly 10 times what it needed for the residents. One day I was forced to park in the resident parking and got a ticket. Every day I had to park there I'd slip the ticket under my windshield wiper and walk on into class. The cars around me would get tickets but they'd just leave the old one on my windshield figuring they already got me. I never even paid it. Worcester State did a horrible job of enforcing parking fines 10 years ago. I did this at my school. I put the ticket under my windshield and for the first time or so it worked. Then I started getting tickets again. One day I sat outside, when I parked legally, and watched the parking guys do their thing. It turns out they mark the tires of the newly ticketed with chalk. It's genius. Really. Who looks at their tires? So then I noted the rotation of colors they used and bought my own chalk. I live in a campus apartment and they've recently changed the visitor spots to 4 hours only. One morning while waiting for the bus I saw the parking police marking the tires of all the cars in the visitor spots with chalk indicating the time a ticket could be written. As soon as he left I went and wiped the chalk off each of the car's tires. I giggled the whole time I was doing it. At the arcade if you pull the ticket out real slow and careful you can get an extra one. Boom. I lived in a trailer park next to a Chuck E. Cheese and before they got the shredders, they just threw out the old tickets in trash bags. I'd wait until the shift changed the next day and split the tickets with my friends. Great system. Why haw. All the pixie sticks you could snort. In case someone is tempted to try this, it hurts a good amount. Old lady, 80s, at my college bookstore, walked in the back with a bag, placed two books in her bag. And then I watched walk to the front as she sold them back to the bookstore. I wanted to say something, but was too impressed. I'm not surprised. Some of the most audacious doucher baggery I've seen in my life was done by old ladies. If you are a woman over about 55 you are invisible. You are non-threatening, unassuming, and trustworthy. You are grammar. You can get away with things you wouldn't believe. In Russia, we shop like this. Enter store. Buy item. Keep receipt. Couple days later go back to store. Bring just the receipt. Pick up identical item you bought before. Go to checkout and say you want a return item. Show receipt as pro off. Get money back. You have won. In Soviet Russia, store pays you. A teacher I had in high school always said to his students if you can get away with cheating go for it. Turns out he had gotten a raise for getting his master's degree, but never actually got the degree. This went on for over 10 years before the school system figured it out. Somehow he got hired at a new school too. Classic winger. I recall reading that some school district was giving out raises for master's degree, and these teachers went online and got a master's degree from one of those phony online by your degree universities, and they all got raises. The school district became suspicious and busted them all. At my university I would always order delivery from a late night eatery and get a ride home with the delivery guy, less expensive than a taxi, with a meal included. Papa John's offers an unadvertised, maybe unofficial, deal where pizzas that were ordered but never picked up are sold for $5 just before closing. Size and toppings doesn't affect the $5 price. So, my friends and I used to order family sized meat lovers pizzas and opt to pay at pickup but never show up. We would wait till closing, pop our heads in and ask if there were any leftover pizzas on the rack for sale. Thus, getting our huge pizzas for $5. I work at Papa John's and I've never heard of this. Enjoy your local deal. I suspect that whoever works at that Papa John's is making some money on the side selling leftover pies and not ringing them up. I've never heard of this either and managed several Papa John's. In the good old days of Black Friday before stores like Best Buy started getting very crafty and clandestine with their deals, 8 plus years ago, there used to be a slight buffer where someone would leak the sales and the items wouldn't be removed from the shelves. 
I don't remember specifically but they had a system to prevent you from purchasing then press matching retroactively. As soon as this happened I strolled on down to Best Buy, took a bunch of stuff that I wanted, and put it in their dryers and washing machines. Basically whatever hiding place that didn't look like it got a lot of browsing or consideration. Then when Black Friday comes, sleep in, head to the store around noon and pull the door busters out of a washing machine. Nice and not illegal. Well done. Here is a Canadian one. Being Canadian it's even ethical. Wait outside a superstore gas station and watch for users that leave the receipt. On the end of each left receipt is a super buck. 20 minutes and you can collect enough for lunch. Saw a bum doing this. Thought it was pretty creative. My favorite homeless entrepreneur asked people for their tickets when they left a nearby paid parking lot early and sold them for 50 cents each. There's a guy in downtown Ottawa who does something similar. He helps you park your car, stopping traffic and directing you, as it's a bit of a pain to park in these spots. Then, when you go to pay, he, correctly, informs you that you don't need to pay, as it's past 5.30pm, when the meter's shut off. He then asks if you have some spare change. I almost never give anything to the homeless downtown, and yet he's gotten cash from me on more than one occasion. I used to be a member of NY Sports Club. It is a semi-expensive gym here. At the time if you forgot your ID card you could just tell the person behind the desk your number. I always forgot. After a while I noticed I was transposing two numbers in my ID and they were still letting me in. I cancelled my membership and had free all access gym membership for 3 years. Ha. Huh. I did this at a local racket club for a while. The very first time. I walked in like I knew the people behind the desk. I waved and said a very friendly hello like I was happy to be seeing them again. There was a guy and a girl working the desk and they both smiled and waved back as I walked in without paying or showing an id card. Perhaps each thought I knew the other? I did this on Monday nights for several months and it worked every time. After a while, they did recognize me and the smiles and hellos became genuine. A guy in my neighborhood owned a piece of land where buildings had been planned to be built. After his wife died, eerie coincidence, yes, he turned it into a graveyard with only her grave in it so the government couldn't take the land. Eminent domain applies to cemeteries, though. And that's how you get the movie Poltergeist. The first rule of stealing is you don't talk about it ever with anyone no matter how anonymous you think you are. Emma steal this rule. I do this thing where you buy the ticket for one movie and then nonchalantly walk into the theaters for other movies within the theater after the first movie finishes. I believe the technical term for this is, movie hopping. I prefer the old double feature. Back in high school I would buy massive quantities of arcade tokens from the manufacturers off of eBay. I was getting about $10 worth of tokens for each $1 spent. I was there one afternoon when some kid went up to the counter and pointed out that the token machine was giving out tokens from some other arcade. The owner was more than upset and I knew it was time to find a new arcade. Using Best Buy warranties to get a new iPhone every time a new model comes out. Isn't that just pure fraud? We just bought a laptop and the 2 year warranty was over $200 which I thought was insane. And the salesman said, yes well it covers complete replacement even if it is your fault. I said, well shouldn't I just break it just under 2 years and bring it back for a new one? He said, that's what I do. Take a big glass of coke and pour it over the keyboard while your computer is on. Making sure you fry the motherboard. Otherwise, they'll just replace parts. This way you'll get a whole new laptop. I have been doing this for a few years. I asked the salesman why I should buy his warranty and he showed me a picture of himself running his car over his MacBook. Sold me instantly. Part of my laptop broke. But the salesman told me to take it out behind his store and get it more damaged before bringing it in. So I could get a brand new one. About 3 years ago, I bought an old battered rod Xbox off of Craigslist for 40 bucks. Apparently the previous owners never registered it and, at the time, Microsoft was allowing boxes less than 2 years old to be replaced if they had rod. This thing was older than that but I figured I had nothing to lose so I sent it in. Microsoft never said a word and I got a brand new one in the mail about 2 weeks later. 
one of the best cheats ever. Know how they have the 3 month free premium channel thing when you switch TV providers? You can get that without switching by calling up your provider and asking to speak to a supervisor and spinning a yarn about how you're unsure since XXXX company will offer you the premium channels. The supervisor's job is to ensure customer satisfaction and they get in trouble if people leave the service under their watch. As such you will often get a price cut or free premium service. Cox Cable. 5 years free HBO. Stars. Cinemax and Showtime. When I was in college there was a pay by the hour parking lot right next to the college of business. Accounting major. The university charged one dollar hour to use the parking lot or you could park two miles away. Wait for a bus. And then ride it to and from campus. Being the savvy business student I was. Every year at the beginning of the fall semester I would park in the pay lot. Buy a ticket. And then run home and enter it into a spreadsheet. I'd record the first day of classes as day one in the first field and then enter the ticket number that I had received that day in a separate field. Needless to say, after three weeks, I would have a strong enough amount of data to plot a line of best fit, using simple algebra that I had learned in college, and was able to predict a ticket number for any given day. I'd then scan a ticket into my school laptop and use Photoshop to edit the date, time and ticket number, printed that beach out, stuck it in my window, and cashed in on free parking. Sure it was a bit dangerous, but it saved me a shit ton of time and money. Plus, my argument if I was ever caught was to explain that I used those skills that the university had taught me in my courses to take advantage of a flawed system. My ethics teacher would have been pissed, but I know my management and econ professors would have been proud. When I was a teenager I worked at a McDonald's where the beverages were self-serve. We just sold you the cup. Once. On a particularly slow day when I was the only one at the registers. An older man walked in with an empty gallon of milk carton. Walked over to the coke dispenser. And started to fill. It took a full minute or two. And he actually looked over at me once. Where I was watching him utterly fascinated. When he was done. He put the little cap back on. Nodded to me then walked back out to his car. I have a complicated cheating the system. On my iPhone, there is a particular app that awards M points whenever you do certain things in the app. The first time you open it each day, when you watch one of the news stories, that kind of thing. Well those M points you could trade in later for tons of things, including Amazon gift cards. 5k M points was a $5 Amazon gift card. Watching a 10 minute video was worth, in the beginning about 300 M points. The trick was that you could drag the bar to the end of the video and it would still trigger the M points. Basically, you could make about $5 a minute the first day they opened it. My buddy and I stayed up super late that night and made several hundred dollars in Amazon gift cards that night. Which were just a coupon code you attached to your Amazon account. The next morning they reduced the value from 300 to something like 100 points. Still worth it in that you could make one stroke three of the money which was essentially free. The final blow was when they reduced the amount to something like 10 points. Then it became too much. In the end, after about a week, we bought two high-end gaming computers, parts then assembled, from nearly scratch. We already had a tower and power supply for one, but the other was completely built for free. Courtesy this app, was incredible. Whoa, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cast you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.